Hi guys, my name's Andy, and this is how to play the classic riff Should I Stay or Should I Go by The Clash. This has a mixture of easy open chords and power chords, but it's very straightforward, lots of muting for beginners, so you've got plenty of time to change. Please subscribe if you like this video. You can find the tab and uh, in book form and also on the website for free in the link in the description. Let's get you straight in for a close-up now. Should I stay or should I go by the clash? Standard tuning and we're changing between a D major chord to a G major chord for the main riff. We play the D chord three times. One, two, three. We strum the G chord four times. One, two, three, four. And then we play the D one more time. There's a mute on beat one. So to correct timing, this would be one and two and three and four and one. Two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one. That's to correct timing. Uh, biggest tip I can give you is make sure you keep your third finger down and play this, what I call a big G or an all fingers G, uh, where we keep the third finger down and the little finger goes underneath it like this. That's the best way to play a D to G change. If you need more help with this D to G change, you want to check out level three of my free beginners course, uh, available at andyguitar.co.uk, also available on DVD and paperback. Um, but that's enough promo. Um, so this happens as the intro riff. And that's the, the majority of the, the kind of verses, really. The only other thing that happens is we want to go for a, a G a power chord to an F and then back to a G. You could do that as a power chord. But either way, we want to uh, bar or put our first finger at the third fret um, for the G power chord or G bar chord. And uh, middle finger third and uh, little finger are in this E major shape. So this is an E shaped bar chord. And then we just slide this down to play the F. If you need more help with these bar chords, the link will be below. Specifically, this F bar chord can give people trouble. But we have a lot of time to change to it, which is why I've chosen this song to teach. This part would be G, 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 F, 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 G. And we slide between them, and then we have a big space. In context... If you say that you are mine We had an age to change and get to this bar chord shape. So really useful people. Um, it is a little quicker in the uh, chorus. But other than that, all that happens is an A chord, which if we're playing rock guitar, we should probably just play it with our first finger. Kind of more of an A power chord style. You can, of course, play the standard A chord that I teach on my beginner's course. That's fine as well, but this one-fingered A chord taught it, uh, again, at level three of my beginner's course, actually. Sounds heavier and more appropriate for, uh, for electric guitar. Right, let's have a playthrough from the top before we get to a chorus. And I will shout out the different sections as they're coming. So, to begin with, two... Three, four, one. That's what we're going for. Three, four, one. Do, 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 one, two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one. Darling, you've got to really slow. Should I stay or should I go? G bar chord, if you say that you are mine. One, two, three, four, G. I'll be here back to the normal riff. So we go to an A chord. And again, it's eight times, but one and two and three and four and one for that A chord. 
Should I stay or should I go? And if you're struggling, you want to just get that main riff and the timing of it, really. So we're, we're strumming all the strings that you normally would, but just say to yourself or sing to yourself, Should I stay or should I go? Strum, 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 one, two, three, four, one. Should I stay or should I go? Should I stay or should I go? If you get the feel of that main riff, you have cracked the song. Uh, right at the start we have this little... which is a slower strum and I'm doing kind of an A bar chord but I'm not touching and pressing any of the strings down, it's just nice and light. And then we also have five to eight. Okay, nice and down and an upstroke, that's all it is in that intro there. And then we have the chorus, which is um, all the same stuff, but uh, with this double time kind of strumming pattern. So we have down, down, up, or down, 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 up, or down. Um, which is taught in my strumming course in the uh, the bonus sections. I think they're on DVD only. Down, down, up, or down, 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 up, or down. Um, should I go? If I go, there will be trouble. And if I stay, there will be double. So you gotta let me know. Okay, so it's all the same pattern as we've learnt in the main riff, but with this double time strumming pattern. Let me slow it down for you. Uh, just the first two bars. Three, four. Okay, let's have a go at that together. Two, three, four. That's what happens. We need that again. Let's do it again. Two, three, four. If you're struggling with that, because it is so fast, you can just do four strums of the D, four strums of the G, and then eight strums of the D. So just eight strumming rather than the, the double time kind of feel. Uh, much trickier to go for the G chord to the F chord. Okay, much trickier to get to the bar chords bit and then back to the D chord. Biggest tip I can give you there is go early. Lift off from this D chord and make the shape of the G earlier, but arrive on the bar chord on beat one. Move as early as you need to, keep the strumming pattern going, and the worst that will happen is, let me, let me give an over-exaggerated example there. So the whole thing kind of, three, four. Okay, if you listened carefully then, you see that I was hitting kind of open strings for almost a bar. But if I play it more up to speed... That's much better. That's what you should be aiming for if this is a challenge for you, uh, rather than... You know, that's kind of dead wrong. Just leaving a gap is is pretty like you've got if that's what you're doing, you've got to train yourself out of that. It is a very bad habit. You can of course get it slower first. But even then You know, going straight for that is is not what we're not the really the way to do it, like training yourself to go straight to it. You should train yourself to do it slowly. But move earlier and arrive on beat one, two, three, like that. That's better. That's better as a, a skill for a beginner to learn rather than 
just persevering until you can change kind of instantly um, and it's always a you know a good thing to aim for is changing at beat four so that would be one two three four you know that's cool one two three four you know you don't have to overemphasize the open strings like i was doing there but that's what I would highly recommend for you. And then we go back to after the A chord. The standard riff and then the cycle repeats uh, one more time after that. Again, the chord sequence and the links to that are in the description. That is how to play Should I Stay or Should I Go. My name's Andy Crowley. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please subscribe to check out more videos on my channel. You've got uh, more easy riffs if you click this area here, and you'll find details of my full beginner's course now available in book format and on DVD by clicking the square over there. Thank you guys for watching. I'm sure I'll see you again. Bye for now.